In environmental watering uses water that's been legally set aside for the environment to actually water key and priority rivers and wetlands. When we use environmental water, we're actually aiming to achieve the maximum environmental benefit for the water that is available. Um, and our focus changes depending what sort of year we're in. In a drought year, we're trying to keep key refuges um, alive, so we maintain drought refuges. We try to avoid critical loss of species and communities with the use of our water. As it becomes a bit wetter, then we use it to enhance natural events and promote recovery and start to include flushing river fl flushes for breeding and, and those sorts of things. Um, this year we've been watering in autumn, a range of drought refuges, and currently this spring, uh, a range of systems. So we've been watering at Hatter Lakes and at uh, Lindsay Walpola Island, and very recently we've added a, a environmental water at Barmer Forest. The water started flowing into Barmer from the Barmer Miller account uh, around the first week of October. So we were keeping a very careful eye on the natural river flows and as they started to drop, as the weather started to dry, we just used the Barmer account to keep the water levels up to sustain and keep flowing those low-lying creeks and those smaller wetlands. Basically the, a natural flood occurred from very heavy rainfall in the upper catchments and that's come and to flood out onto this floodplain. Because the rate of fall of that natural flood was so quick, we released a small amount of environmental water that was held in storage to keep the flood elevated within the, the river. What that does is it keeps a lot of the wetlands of Barma Milua flooded, just shallowly, but just enough to keep water birds sitting on nests or frogs breeding or floodplain fish in those systems. Yeah, look, this section here is where the flood has, has been and receded. So these lower pockets of red gum have still got quite a bit of water still lying in them. You know, that could be 30, 40 centimetres deep across there. This big old red gum behind me here has obviously received many, many floods over its lifetime and, you know, it's still got the water around its root system and it'll continue to use that moisture for quite a few more weeks yet. Blind Charlie can see the, the changes that have been made in the last couple of months because of the, uh, the water. We've been able to get up in these uh, areas again. Uh, and the, um, the, the greenness that's there now, uh, the wildlife, it, it's, it's almost you know, singing out for joy now that um, it's got something to look forward to. Um, they depend on it. People visiting the forest have actually seen some of the wetland vegetation really sort of green up and, uh, and start reproducing. We've heard frogs and we see frogs breeding, um, frog eggs and some tadpoles starting. There's been some turtle breeding um, and we're starting to see the colonial water birds starting to build their nesting sites. So the next couple of months will be uh, quite exciting.